Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan Emmis, Pitts, Ukraine War News Update, third part thereof, although fourth if you take into account my military aid package video from the US uh, for the 18th of April 2024. Um, I'm just going to do a bit of correction. Sometimes I people reach out to me and say, look, you got this wrong, and I say, thanks for that, I'll, I better say that to the team, but then forget to because my brain's full of, full of mush, full of so much stuff. And this one is fresh on the mind. So uh, I, I did make claims that rodents had been uh, gnawing away at the dam in, in Russia. And that's partly why or that's the Russians or the Russian authorities claim was the reason that the dam broke in the in one of the regions there. And I sort of poured scorn on that idea. But it turns out, you know, it's reached out a few Dutch people reach out because the Dutch have a penchant for a penchant for dikes and um, and dams, and they they know their stuff with regard to that subject. And so it, it is apparently the case that rodents can cause problems for dikes, and as a result, the Dutch are onto it, and they uh, make sure that all of their dikes are very closely inspected, and that rodents are are not an issue and, and so as long as you are doing the right things inspecting putting the effort into sorting these things out then they don't become a problem so it turns out that actually rodents could have been responsible for some issues with said dam but uh had there not been endemic corruption you would assume the russians would have been onto it but since there is those kind of issues could lead to larger problems whether it would lead to a dam collapsing i don't know but anyway there you go that's uh the Dutch and their Dan Dyke situation. Uh, I, I've been corrected. Thank you. Uh, moving on to Georgia, we have a continuation of the issues that have been taking place there, uh, particularly in Tbilisi, but not only Tbilisi, over the last couple of days, capital of Georgia, over this foreign agent law that the, the Georgia Dream pro Russian party is trying to uh, pass. Well, they have successfully passed it, I think, on second draft in their parliament. Uh, all of their, I think, 83 Georgia Dream uh, majority MPs, they uh, they voted for it. And that is going to give the government a much greater control over the democratic processes in Georgia, which aligns them closer to Russia. It's the same sort of law that uh, Hungary and Russia themselves have enacted. Many people are still get. I mean, there are just videos of huge crowds in Tbilisi. Reports are that the leaders of the opposition parties, Eleko Elisashvili and Levan Kabeshvili, uh, were detained by Georgian security forces. That is not good news. I, and I, I really hope this can be sorted out. Uh, but what we don't want is a country, you know, going down the path of just huge violence and massive um, protests that, that end up in the security services cracking down on essentially on democracy. I mean, this was Tbilisi last night. Glory to Ukraine, glory to Georgia, F Russia uh, were, I think, the general thoughts. Always interesting to see the flags, EU flags, uh, even a US flag there, Georgian flags and whatnot. Um, this is, again, site, these are sites from Tbilisi. Huge crowds, which I think is good news for democracy. Let's hope that that is widespread throughout Georgia and not just in Tbilisi. There were scenes from elsewhere. This is Batumi, uh, where there was a march against the law, uh, the draft law on foreign agents. At the head of the column, participants carry a huge flag of the European Union. Uh, so just hope that that, that resolves itself uh, in a pro-democratic way. A court in France has seized Putin's ex-wife's villa, uh, Challenge, uh, according to them. Um, a court in France has decided to seize the 5.4 million euro Susanna villa from businessman Arthur Ocheretny, uh, Ocheretny uh, which is a small Village outside of Avdivka, it turns out. Uh, the current husband of Lud Lyudmila Putina, so that's Putin's previous wife, the Russian president's ex-wife. Uh, French authorities confiscated it back in December. 
Um, the, uh, that was done by Ginalco, the division of the Paris Prosecutor's Office, following a complaint by the French branch of Transparency International, which demanded to verify the origin of the funds used to buy the villa. Now it is completely empty be interesting to see what happens to that that's one of those confiscated assets uh media reports generally that the fbi have questioned far-right german lawmaker over su suspected russian funding america's federal bureau of investigation the fbi have questioned far-right german lawmaker maximilian Kra last december they did that in new york over suspicion that he was receiving money from kremlin agents an investigation by de spiegel and zdf published on the 16th uncovered Kra confirmed he was in interrogated by the FBI in a comment for the Spiegel, but denied receiving money from Moscow. And this is all a big problem, isn't it? Germany and indeed disinformation and uh, Russian influence at large. According to Spiegel information, the police in Beirut uh, uh, arrested, I don't know how so you pronounce that German place, arrested two uh, suspected Russian spies. They are said to have spied on US bases and planned attacks on military transport routes through which military aid is transported to Ukraine. The main, uh, uh, the main accused is a 39-year-old German Russian from Bavaria. He is said to have received support from another 37-year-old Russian sorry, German, Russian. Between 2014 and 16, the main accused is said to have belonged to a militia of the Donetsk People's Republic proclaimed by Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine. Um, so, yeah, German authorities have thwarted suspected Russian sabotage plot targeting military aid to Ukraine is how you, you might impress report it. Um, yeah, planning explosive and arson attacks and taking videos of US military facilities. That is it just... In case, if you're in America and you're wondering whether the Russians are pitting themselves against the US directly, here's an example of how it looks. Uh, you've also got Russian disinformation taking place not only in, in the US and throughout Europe, but in, in Africa. Military intelligence is reporting that Russia is planning disinformation campaigns about Ukrainian fighters in Sudan, where the Ukrainian fighters are working against Russian fighters. Uh, it plans to sow disinformation in African media that accuses Ukraine of using Western-supplied arms to fight in Sudan, according to Ukraine's military intelligence. Uh, and then hackers linked to Russia's military have claimed credit for sabotaging US water utilities. Right, when is, is the whole of the... Um, the American political landscape going to wake up to the fact that Russia aren't the good guys and they, they are fighting directly against the US. Like, what does Marjorie Taylor Greene, for example, have to say about this? So let's have a look at this. Russia's, this is from Wired, Russia's military intelligence unit known, known as Sandworm, these guys are very well known in the hacking world, has for the past decade served as the Kremlin's most aggressive cyber attack force, triggering blackouts in Ukraine and releasing self-spreading destructive code in incidents that remain some of the most disruptive hacking events in history. In recent months, however, one group of hackers linked to Sandworm has attempted a kind of digital mayhem that in some respects goes even beyond its predecessor. They've claimed responsibility for directly targeting the digital systems of water utilities in the United States and Poland, as well as a water mill in France, flipping switches and changing software settings in an apparent effort to sabotage those countries' critical infrastructure. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, so you've got the US, Polish and French involved here. Apparent victims of the hacking include multiple US water utilities in Texas, uh, and as mentioned, Polish water treatment plant and French water mill. A new report published by uh, today by cybersecurity firm Mon Mandiant draws a link between that hacker group and one sandworm, which has been identified for years as Unit 74455 of Russia's GRU military intelligence agency. Mandiant uh, found evidence that Samwen helped create Cyber Army of Russia Reborn and tracked multiple issue in instances Sorry, when data stolen from networks that Sandworm had attacked was later leaked by the Cyber Army of Russia Reborn group. In other words, they are just another aspect to the Russian military cyber warfare. In, in other words, the state. They are eff effectively state actors. Uh, what you get often in, in cyber warfare is plausible deniability, where you, you do things by actors that can nefariously, maybe tenuously be linked to, to, say, the Russian state or any state itself. But you can also deny it uh, and and it's, they live in this grey area. Uh, Mandiant couldn't determine, however, whether cyber security, cyber army of Russia reborn, is merely one of the many cover personas that Sandworm has adopted to disguise its activities over the past decade, or instead a distinct group that Sandworm helped to create 
and collaborated with, but which is now operating independently. Either way, Cyber Army of Russia Reborn's hacking has now, in some respects, become even more brazen than Sam Worm itself, says John Hultqvist who leads Mandiant's threat intelligence efforts and has tracked Samwen's hackers for nearly a decade. He points out that Samwen had never, has never directly targeted a US network with a disruptive cyber attack, only planted malware on US networks in preparation for one, or in the case of its 2017 not petia ransomware attack, infected US victims indirectly with self-spreading code. Cyber Army of Russia, reborn by contrast, hasn't hesitated to cross the line. There's lots of details, lots of kind of geekery going going on here but you can go and look at the details in Wired uh, but it says at the end of the article quote someone under this persona is doing some really aggressive stuff and they're doing it globally and they could ultimately cause a very real incident how Chris says quote if this is just some random group of activists who lack the structure and restraint of the mil of a military organization they may cross lines in ways that no one anticipates anticipates so, you know, this could be really bad. And again, it's trying to, trying to work out whether they definitely are the Russian state. Of course, they're the Russian state. But it's about having uh, like irrefutable proof that that's the case. Um, yeah, the, the, as I say, go and check the original out. There's lots more detail in there about how effectively the US has been attacked by Russian um, state-connected cyber warfare entities. Then you get this in the Washington Post. Secret Russian foreign policy document urges action to weaken the US. So Russia's foreign ministry has uh, been drawing up plans to try to weaken its Western adversaries, including the United States, and leverage the Ukraine war for to forge a global order free from what it sees as American dominance, according to the sec a secret foreign ministry document. In a classified addendum to Russia's official and public foreign policy concept of the Russian Federation, the ministry calls for an, quote, offensive information campaign and other measures spanning, quote, the military, political, economic and trade and informational psychological spheres against a, quote, coalition of unfriendly countries led by the United States. Uh, we need to continue adjusting our approach to relations with unfriendly states, states the 2023 document, which was provided to the Washington Post by a European intelligence service. It's important to create a mechanism for finding the vulnerable points of their external and internal policies with the aim of developing practical steps to weaken Russia's opponents. So this is a document I talked about the other day that the Washington Post has has um in their possession and it's just another example of how russia have pitted themselves against the us in a very explicit manner and that they are indeed attempting to undermine us elections uh, and democratic uh processes with disinformation um what are the us going to do about it i just don't know um Western officials, it says, later have warned that Russia has been escalating its propaganda and influence campaigns over the past two years, and it seeks to undermine support for Ukraine. As part of that, it has sought to create a new global divide with Russian propaganda efforts against the West resonating in many countries in the Middle East, Africa, Latin America, and Asia, and indeed in, in Europe and pretty much everywhere. Quote, I think the US was convinced that the rest of the world, North and South, would support the US in a conflict with Russia, and it turned out that this was not true, Zarakin told the Post in an earlier interview. This demonstrates the single polar world is over, and that the US doesn't want to come to terms with this. For Mikhail Khodorkovsky, the longtime Putin critic who was once rich, Russia's richest man until a clash with the Kremlin landed him 10 years in prison, is not surprising that Russia is seeking to do everything it, it can to undermine the United States. Quote, for Putin, it is absolutely natural that the that he should try to create the maximum number of problems for the US, he said. The task is to take the US out of the game and try and destroy NATO. Uh, th this doesn't mean dissolving it, but to create the feeling among people that NATO isn't defending them. The long congressional standoff on providing more weapons for Ukraine was only making it easier for Russia to challenge Washington's global power, he said. Quote, the Americans consider that insofar as they are not directly participating in the war in Ukraine, Ukraine, then any loss is not their loss, Khodorkovsky uh, said. This is an absolute misunderstanding. A defeat for Ukraine, he said, quote, means that many will stop fearing challenging the US and the costs for the United States will only increase. I mean, scary stuff. Again, why don't people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, why aren't they sat down and shown stuff like this? Why are they not literally educated on these sorts of matters and it, you know it's bad because and it gets worse 
So Microsoft brought out a report today. A Russian online disinformation campaign targeting the upcoming US election has begun, according to Microsoft, in a report released yesterday. This is this is not good news. Kiev Independent says, uh, in fact, I have that here. Um, Kiev Independent says a Russian online disinformation campaign targeting the upcoming US inflation. Uh, election has begun according to um, Microsoft US officials have said US that sorry Russia engaged in a widespread campaign of digital disinformation and hacking in the past two presidential elections with particular effort dedicated to the 2016 election the governments of Belgium and Czechia also warned early in April that Russia and indeed uh, Poland was operating a disinformation and interference network targeting the upcoming EU parliamentary election according to Microsoft report Russia's campaign to sow disinformation in the US has begun in earnest over the the past month and a half, but has yet to reach a height of previous efforts. The focus on new uh, campaign is to spread, quote, divisive content, including criticism of US support for Ukraine, the Microsoft report said. One of the more common methods is for Russia to spread fake whistleblower narratives that are then picked up by US media outlets, quote, ultimately after the narrative has been circulated online for se a series of days or weeks, US audiences repeat and repost this disinformation likely unaware of its original source, Microsoft said. And I talked you through that with regard to what the Swedish media outlet reported recently and how those disinformation stories get out. And sometimes they start in places like Egypt with an anonymous YouTube source picked up by another one, then by another one, and then it kind of spreads. And and then, then when you start seeing that information in the mainstream media, you don't know where its origin originally was. Despite concerns, the article continues that Russia would increase its usage of AI-based disinformation campaigns. Microsoft said that more traditional influence measures uh, remain the predominant methods employed. Quote, the simplest manipulations, not the most complex employment of AI, will likely be the pieces of content that have the most impact. So trolls and, and bots, automated bots, but not AI bots. Incumbent US President Joe Biden will face a presumptive nominee for Republican Party former President Donald Trump in the election in November. The views of the two presumptive nominees in Ukraine duff, differ considerably, and the outcome of the election is likely to significantly influence US support for Ukraine. And that is why Russia is trying so hard to undermine the election in the US or to manipulate voters towards voting for Trump. Now, it's not all bad. There are lawmakers in the US that just they're just on it. I'm a big fan of Jasmine Crockett from Texas, a Republican, uh, sorry, a, a Democrat representative in the House of Representatives who is she's got a legal background actually um and she she brings it she so often brings it i've seen her in um committee hearings and whatnot uh just being on point here she is on point regarding ukraine and love it as we talk about rhetoric in fact i'm, I'm going to increase the sound of that uh, it doesn't sound like it's particularly loud something else that was appalling to me was this insinuation that when you look at the Ukrainians, which is why we're having problems getting the funding that Ukraine needs, is because people in this chamber push misinformation and disinformation. They want to talk about the Ukrainians got all of these Nazis. Well, let me tell you something. You can find Nazis anywhere. You can find them right here in the United States. In fact, a bunch of the people that they're calling um, victims and prisoners of war also known as convicted felons from January 6th. I have an article that I'd like to enter into the record by unanimous consent that says, neo-Nazi January 6th rioter pleads guilty. Without objection. Thank you so much. So here's the point. We have people in this chamber that are actually causing just as much a threat, if not more of a threat, to our own country. We should be talking about holding our very own accountable for the misinformation and disinformation that they are spreading, whether it's coming out of China, whether it's coming out of Russia, or whoever is peddling it. It is a problem because right now what we see is that people are dying and we cannot get the support that we need from the public because they continue to peddle lies. And I'm tired of it because I didn't come 
to this chamber to play games. I came to this chamber to answer to the people, the American people, and to make sure that we keep the American people safe. And if we don't get something done as they talk about the border, I do want to be clear, the only reason we haven't gotten funding for the border is because they killed, the House Republicans here killed the bill that they actually sent us from the Senate side. If they want to do some work, let me tell you something. The Democrats are ready, and it seems like the Senate Republicans are ready too. They just need to get to it and stop peddling Putin's lies. Thank you, and I yield. General. As we talk about- Boom! Drop mic. Thank you, and I'm going home. Well done, Crockett. Amazing stuff. Um, and it's interesting, like, you know, again, I, I think about these, these uh, politicians like Marjorie Taylor Greene and think they would, uh, it, might, they, it might be water off a duck's back, to be honest, but tw 20 days in Mariupol is being screened in the European Parliament. Just look at all of these people watching this uh, incredibly important documentary as it scans around those in the uh, European Parliament in a second. Just absolutely brilliant uh, to see that all of that. Look at all of those people. They are they are watching that and getting a proper understanding of what is going on in Ukraine to give hopefully uh, some emotional resolve to the rational decisions they're involved in making. German Deputy Prime Minister Robert Habeck has arrived in Kiev. The perp he's already I think promised one more. Mm. He's announced that another uh, Iris T rocket uh, um, surface air missile system is on the way to Ukraine from Germany but I don't think it's a new one it's one that was going to come anyway anyway the purpose of the visit is to address Russia's attacks on Ukraine's energy infrastructure provide emergency aid to our country in these circumstances and seek Germany's assistance in strengthening the Ukrainian economy I don't know if there's another uh, vote on Ukraine aid coming up in the German Bundestag uh, imminently let me know I'm sure someone afforded me something uh, along those lines Russian chi uh, exports to China fell by 16% in March compared to last year. Publication notes that, uh, this is Bloomberg, that such a trend has been observed for the first time since mid-2022. The main reason is the US threats to introduce sanctions against banks and enterprises that contribute to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So that's potentially really good news, hitting Russia where it hurts, in a pocket, uh, exports down to China. We know that China are providing an awful lot of stuff to Ukraine, or exports of Russian diesel have fallen by 25% to, due to attacks on refineries, according to Bloomberg as well. So with the country's oil refining rate recently falling to an 11-month low, there is a possibility that it will have to divert crude that its refineries cannot process to the export market. Um, again, that should hit Russia where it hurts. Anyway, that's enough from me. Really appreciate your support and uh, your watching of the channel. Thank you so much for the lively conversations that always take place in the threads below. I do try and read as much as I physically can, even though I can't always reply to them. I do, I should be doing more with my, it's a beautiful day out there, sort of. Um, the sun is vaguely out. I should be outside getting some vitam vitamin D and uh, I'm inside talking to you. So I'm going to take a break, have a cup of tea and probably get back to you a little bit later. Take care. Speak soon.